to the unconscious competence level where this is happening automatically. It happens automatically when you've done this enough times and you develop enough neural pathways in the brain and the positive ball of energy is bigger than the negative ball of energy. So let me give you a specific list of things you can do to feel good now. And some of these might surprise you, but these are the things that we have learned, myself and my colleagues, that work incredibly effectively well. And some of these are simplistic and easy, but you'll be surprised because they all work. And so if you're listening to the CDs, you can listen to them, but you sh should write them down. If you hear, you can write these down so you have this list available. First, if your body feels bad, it's gonna be harder for you to feel good. So first and foremost, your body is an important element to feel good with your body. First and foremost, you wanna be eating good food. Throughout history, food has been substance. The number one cause of death throughout history has been famine, lack of food. The second cause of death has been uh, disease, which is caused by nutritional deficiencies in a weak immune system, which is lack of food. So you should be eating good food. Without getting into a big lecture on what's right to eat, I'll make it very simple. You can virtually eat anything you want, but eat food that is as close to as nature intended. So if you wanna eat lots of fruits, fresh fruits are better than canned fruits, obviously. Organically grown fruits are better than conventional because they're not genetically modified. They don't have the pesticides and herbicides on them. There is a huge difference between organically grown produce, which is why when you go to four and five star resorts where the wealthy go, most of the produce is organically grown. When you go to people's homes, organically grown is much better. Not genetically modified, no pesticides and herbicides. Vegetables, same thing. Fresh vegetables are better than cooked vegetables, but both are just fine. Organically grown vegetables are better. Grains, rice, wheat, barley. Somebody says, when, when do I, would I ever eat barley? Well, if you ever had barley soup, uh, buckwheat, there's a lot of different grains. People don't even eat them today in, in various countries, but in other countries you eat them all the time. But grains are good, oatmeals, ideally organically grown grains. And this is very significant because most grains today, corn specifically, but most grains today are being genetically modified specifically for the feed industry so that when they feed grains to animals, it makes the animals grow faster and get fatter quicker. So organically grown grains, again, that have not been genetically modified, Meats, beef, chicken, lamb, veal, all good, fine, no problems. Any types of meats, ideally organically grown animals, whether it's eggs, organically grown, dairy products, organically grown, and meats, organically grown, because they don't have a bovine growth hormone or other hormones pumped into them. The animals are slaughtered properly they're cleaner, they're healthier, they don't have antibiotics pumped into them. And there's a huge difference, a huge difference between organically grown meat products and those that are not. One example is a cow is a vegetarian animal, which is supposed to eat grass. Commercially grown cattle can be fed genetically modified corn and grains that make these animals grow unnaturally fat and they're also fed ground up dead pigs, horses, cows, goats, and chickens that were too sick to slaughter and give to humans. So they feed them to the vegetarian cow, which is one of the causes of mad cow disease. And obviously then that animal, which is eating dead animals when it's not supposed to, is a vegetarian, gets sick and has the disease of the animals that it's eating and then you're eating that, that cow. So ideally organically grown uh, meat products and dairy products. So eat good food. 
eating three times a day is really important. Eating fresh fruits every day, fresh vegetables every day as part of your regime is really important. And stay away from things such as artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners will block your brain's ability to send out vibrations. Interesting. High fructose corn syrup, syrup, stay away from that. Very dangerous. Monosodium glutamate, stay away from that. Stay away from processed foods. Stay away from fast food restaurants because when you go to a fast food restaurant, everything in it has high fructose corn syrup, monosodium glutamates, and other chemicals which block your ability to think and actually make you feel bad and depressed because they're blocking neuropathways in the brain. So eating good food is really significant and important. I'm not gonna give a complete lecture on that. Later, I'll go into all the details of what you should and shouldn't be eating, but eating good food is really vital. Secondly, nutritional deficiencies. Everyone has nutritional deficiencies because we're not eating as good as we should. So by eating good food, that'll help handle nutritional deficiencies. When your body has all the proper nutrients, you feel better, you think clearer, and you can focus, and you can transmit vibration better. You will always feel better when you have all the nutrients you need. I suggest don't taking, not taking vitamins and minerals, but taking what's called whole food supplements, which is basically concentrated food. So when you're eating a whole food supplement, it is a supplement that you take to supplement your diet. And these supplements contain concentrated food sources. Therefore, you're getting all the vitamins, minerals, and enzymes from food in a concentrated form in the exact proportion that nature intended. That way you're getting all the vitamins and minerals in the proportion that nature had intended. A good source for that, you can go on the web, is qnlabs.com. That's one of the best sources in the United States, and there are other companies all around the world, whole food sources. Next, one of the reasons why you feel bad and one of the things that will block your ability to focus are toxins in the body. Toxins include heavy metals, such as from mercury fillings, Candida is a toxin in the body. All the food you've eaten your whole life, the pesticides, the herbicides, are in your body with toxins. In the water supply, chlorine and fluoride, those are toxins. Water that you drink and water that you uh, bathe and shower in. We are loaded with toxins from the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the number one toxin that you're dealing with today are drugs. I'm not gonna get into this whole discussion, but Getting people to use pharmaceutical drugs, non-prescription and prescription drugs, is something that's prevalent because taking drugs, even an aspirin, will weaken your ability to focus and transmit vibration. So the more drugs somebody can get you to take makes you powerless. It reduces your power to create. So if you're taking... Uh, nasal decongestion, cold and flu medicine, uh, statins for high cholesterol, a drug for high blood pressure, pain medication. All these things reduce your ability to transmit vibration. It's specifically designed to keep get you less powerful. So we're loaded up with toxins. Therefore, you should be doing some type of cleansing to get these toxins out. Now, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of cleanses, but you want to do the following. A colon cleanse, a liver gallbladder cleanse, a kidney cleanse, a parasite cleanse, a candida cleanse, a fat cell cleanse, and a heavy metal cleanse. Those are the basic ones. You can go to qnlabs.com. They have a lot of good cleanses. You can also go to drschultz.com. He has a lot of good cleanses. You can just go online and Google cleanses, and you can see a whole bunch of different cleanses available. You can go to naturalcures.com. They have a lot of great cleanses at that website. So cleansing and getting cleanses, uh, toxins out of the body is very effective. 
We do fasting, we do colonics, and we do this on a regular basis to make sure that our power, it's kind of like taking your car in and getting a tune-up and getting the oil and filter changed. If you're going to race a car, want to win the race, you want to make sure that engine is operating really powerfully. Here, your engine is your brain and your ability to focus and transmit vibration. So that's why doing these things is really important. The next thing, which is very interesting, is in today, this didn't exist 50 years ago. Today, you're bombarded by electromagnetic frequencies. Remember I told you the experiments where various things from a bar of gold to a glass of water to a, uh, a piece of metal, when hit with an electromagnetic frequency from a radio wave, a microwave, a wireless device, a cell phone, these waves affect vibration. You are being bombarded 24 hours a day, seven days a week from all the satellites that are beaming electromagnetic waves, all the cell phone towers, all the radio transmissions, and in your homes, all the electrical wiring emits radio waves. All the wireless devices emit radio waves. Your cell phones, your laptop computers that are on wireless, Wi-Fi. We are bombarded today by radio waves, and these radio waves are hitting us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We can't avoid them anywhere on the planet. And these radio waves are going to affect our own vibration and our ability to transmit vibration. So what do you do? You can't eliminate it, but you can neutralize it. They're called electromagnetic chaos eliminators. And there's a All right, guys. <clears throat> We're going to start in 2 minutes. Spread the word. Last last 2 minutes go in those group chats. Let everybody know that mornings with Nano will start in exactly 2 minutes. Spread that word, spread that word. I hope you guys are really listening to this message this morning because it is very very powerful. KT dropping a lot of valuable information that we all need to know and stuff that everybody here needs to really understand, guys. So um, take two minutes to finish listening to this, but, um, you know, spread the word out in your group chats. All right, fam, two minutes. Let's run it. There's a lot of devices that you can purchase. Many of them are great. Some of them are very good. They all vary in terms of their effectiveness. No one really knows which is the best ones are out there, but there's a few of them. Q-Link is one. An e-pendant is another. You can get that at ewater.com. BioPro is another effective one. BioShield is another effective one. You can just go online and, and punch in and Google EMFs, and you'll see a whole bunch of websites and different products giving devices that you can put on laptops, devices that you can wear on yourself, Devices you can put on your uh, wireless devices. Uh, these things you can put on your cell phones. And what they'll do is they'll help neutralize this electromagnetic energy and chaos so your body will be more balanced and it really will affect your power. Next is exercise. You always feel better when you exercise for a lot of reasons. You're oxygenating the body and so forth. The most important way to feel better if somebody say, what is there, if there's one thing I can do to feel better, what would it be? And that is go for a walk outside. You're getting the sun. The sun is vital to making you feel better. So getting outside, I don't care what month it is, you know, if it's cold, put on clothes, because the radiation from the sun will pass through your clothes into your body. Get outside and go for a walk. Throughout history, the wealthy always went outside. They always walked with rare exception. And those who didn't, such as Howard Hughes, became crazy. But going outside for a walk or riding a horse, but no one has a horse sitting around. Uh, aristocracy always rode horses. But go outside for a walk for about an hour. Doesn't have to be a fast walk. And when you're walking, look at things far away. It'll make you feel much, much better. The sun and so forth. Actually, research shows that the number one easiest, fastest way to cure any type of depression or low feeling is going for a walk outside for about an hour and looking at things far away. The natural body movement of walking. 
All right, fam. That's that's enough. Too much sauce right there. He, he dropped too much sauce for us right there, guys. Well, fam, if everybody got value from hearing that right there, uh, let's put a let's put a three in the chat box. If you guys got value from that, good, good value right there. As you guys know, KT, I would highly recommend everybody to go listen to that audio um, because that was the audio that I was telling you guys about the other day that, you know, would really give you perspective on the foods, the drinks, the things that we have going on in our lives that, you know, sometimes we don't realize, but sometimes those are the things holding us back. Right. I know so many people that, you know, they do the meditations, they do the reading, they they, they wake up early, they they do the journaling, they do everything. But the thing is that they still haven't got their body in the right form. They still are not working out. They're still eating junk food. They're not eating organically grown foods. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, there's certain individuals that unfortunately have not become aware of yet. And that's why I tell you guys, listen to this audio because it'll give you a huge, huge breakthrough on some of the things that we are doing that are causing us to vibrate at a low level. And it's not allowing us to become that best version of ourselves. And remember, we are what we eat. Okay, so I highly recommend it. As a matter of fact, consider it homework. Right. Consider it homework. All right, look, I dropped the, the link to it in the chat right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but um, let me see. Krista, what's goody? The law. Sorry, hold up. Let me put the. Operation. So. You know, we want to be able to really start understanding things on a different level, fam. So um, I introduce you guys to this information because um, I got introduced to this information and it changed my life. Like it really, really did. Like once I really started to understand this stuff, it changed everything for me. Everything, everything, everything. Like my life has not been the same ever since I started to understand this information. I just put the link also in the Telegram chat as well. So if you guys want to watch it, because, you know, I look at life completely different now. I, the way I process, the way I eat, everything is completely different now than from what it was in the past. And that's what I want you guys to understand is that I want all of you to be on this type of time. I want all of us to start eating organically, you know, grown meals and learning how to cleanse our system of all of these negative metals and, you know, bad nutrients and stuff that we've eaten over the years, we got to cleanse ourselves of that because it's in our body right now, you know, and, you know, all the junk food that we've eaten in the past, you know, all the, you know, all the, all the fast food, all the bad meats, all the inorganic stuff, fruits, all of these pesticides and herbicides and all this stuff, we have to make sure that we get rid of all of this, fam. We got to get rid of all of it so that that way we can take ourselves to some new levels and cleanse our bodies of what it was that, you know, they set us up with. So I want to make sure that you guys understand this. This, like I said, the stuff that I teach you guys on this call is not to scare you, is not to, is not to make you worry, is to make you aware so you can make changes now. The important thing is that now you can make changes, OK, and you really and we all really need to make changes. OK, we really need to make changes. And is it's something that um, a lot of people are not understanding, but we need to understand, guys. So um, just a quick message, just a quick message. I didn't want to I don't want to go too deep into that because, you know, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. And we got a call that we got to do here today. But um, Grand Rising family, I am feeling so blessed and so grateful to be on this call here today. Uh, big happy smiles. I am feeling good and I'm getting better every single morning. Uh, I expect miracles and I get miracles. Uh, today is Christmas and today is a really special day. Um, anyone who knows July 6th is a very special day in the mornings with Nano community because July 6th was the was my first ever breakthrough and, uh, and a lot of amazing things have happened for me on July 6th, which was 
a really big day, which was, I say, always the day that changes everything, a huge breakthrough I had. And I, and I could potentially give you guys a quick story of it, but I really want to jump back into the book because the book has some fire, fire imp- information that everybody needs. And I want to make sure you guys get that. So before we start, let's express some gratitude. What is one thing that you guys are grateful for this morning? Type it in the chat box. What is one thing that you are grateful for this morning? I am grateful for God and all that he provides me. Absolutely. I am grateful for my health. I am grateful for my mom, my dad, my little brother. I am grateful for my goddaughter, Dariana. I am grateful for my team and the leaders within my organization. I am extremely grateful for the roof over my head. I'm extremely grateful for the, the, the leaders within the organization, the whole Mornings with Nano community. I'm extremely grateful for Katie and all that she does for me. Um, I can't thank her enough for always being there for me each and every single day. Um, I'm grateful for uh, Hazel. I miss her so much. I miss Hazel so very much. I can't wait to see her. Um, I'm grateful for the clothes on my back. I'm grateful for the food I get to eat. I'm grateful for the book, The Power of Now, and all the lessons it's teaching me. I'm grateful for my sister. And I'm grateful for my sister, uh, Janelis. Is today is Janelis Rosa's birthday. Okay. Today is Janelis rosa's birthday all right fam so um if we could type a happy birthday in the chat box for my sister janelle's rosa she is like a mom to me a mentor and accountability partner for me we love her so much if you guys can send her a you know a text message a, a dm letting her know that you know it's her birthday you know somebody send a screenshot to her and let her know that we are wishing her happy birthday on mornings with Nano. Let me actually take a quick picture as well. Sorry, Instagram. There we go. Happy birthday, Shorty. The whole mornings with Nano family wishes you happy birthday. We all here. Keep wishing her happy birthday, fam. Let's send her all love. We appreciate her. We love Shorty. Shorty is the best. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Happy birthday, Shorty. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for always being there for me. You're the best. The best, the best, the best. Chori, let's go. She's going to love that. Let me send that to her really quick. (laughs) She's going to love this. Perfect, fam. So let's run it up. I'm super, super excited to be on this call. Let's get this call going. We sent our happy birthdays to Shorty, and um, I'm excited. So let's get this call rocking. Let's get it going. All right. So um, like I said, July 6th is a huge day for us. I always tell people July 6th was the, was the day that I had a breakthrough. Um, and a lot of people sometimes ask me, you know, what, what is a breakthrough? Like, what, 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 what is that? When you're on this journey um, and you start it in the beginning, a lot of things may seem very um, unusual and you're probably not doing, you know, things that you once used to do. You're doing a lot of different things. And they say that in order for you to get things you've never had, you got to do things you've never done. And you know, for a while after you start doing things that you've never done, you actually start to get breakthroughs. You actually start to have realizations. You have to have, you start to have perspective shifters. And that's what happened to me on July 6th in 2019. Uh, After months of me doing things I've never done, things like reading, things like meditating, things like journaling, things like visualization, things like going to the beach. I was doing a lot of things that were the old ver that 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 the old version of me wasn't doing right and since i had been doing those things and i had been making sacrifices and i had been stepping out of my comfort zone i experienced my first big breakthrough and from the moment of that breakthrough right at, at that breakthrough i didn't really have much right i want you guys to understand that i didn't really have much when that breakthrough happened i was grateful for where i was at i was making you know just under $2000 a month but you know, I didn't really have much. And after that breakthrough, 
what tends to happen is you get these ideas. It's kind of like there's a door in your mind that opens up and it gives you all the answers you've been looking for. And that's what happened to me on July 6th. A door opened up in my mind and all the answers I had been looking for were just poured into me. And I wrote about it and I wrote a total of 21 pages just writing. My mentor told me, yo, just go home and write down everything that you are feeling, everything. And what that did was it gave me a game plan of what I needed to do. Basically, the, that, that those 21 pages was a game plan, you know, that was given to me for me to go out there and run that summer. And I ran that play that summer, guys. And I went from, like I always tell you guys, no income claims. I went from making $2,000 a month to over $12,000 a month in a matter of three months because of that breakthrough. Okay. So I'm not going to sit here and, um, you know, go over the whole entire breakthrough because the breakthrough came because I was reading books like this one right here. You know, the breakthrough came because I was applying these moments right here. Okay. So I want to continue to read off of the book so that, um, we can finish up this chapter right here and we can get into the rest of it. But I was applying this specific information right here. OK, if you guys want to listen to like that day is my first episode in my podcast. It's called The Day That Changed Everything. OK, it's called The Day That Changed Everything, fam. But let's get into uh, what we were talking about yesterday. Um, just so that any can anybody give me a reminder of exactly where we were at? Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm right here where it says the subconscious is not concerned with the truth or the falsity of your feeling. It's always accepts as true, which that which you feel to be true. So we are on page six. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's where I thought we were. Yeah, we're on page six um, and we are on page six right there where it says the feeling is the ascent. OK, that's where we're at. Yep, exactly. Bottom of page six. If you have the book. Okay, so we are right here, okay, where it says feeling is. Okay, that's where we're at. All right, so we're going to continue from there. Um, if you weren't on the call yesterday, um, right now we are basically teaching individuals um, from this book right here, which is called The Feeling is a Secret. We're going to be covering it um, on this call over the next few days. We're going to study it. Um, if you want a copy so you can read along with it, it's in my Telegram chat. Um, you can go in there and see it if you didn't see it. Um, but we're on page six. And I just want you guys to hear me out so that you can really understand the information that I share on these calls because this is the information that had really changed my life. All right, fam. So let's get right into this. OK, so let's get uh, right there. Page six. Feeling is the ascent. All right. So let's start. So he goes over and he says feeling is the ascent of the subconscious to the truth of that which is declared to be true because of this quality of the subconscious there is nothing impossible to man whatever the mind of a man can conceive and feel as true the subconscious can and must objectify your feelings create the pattern from which your world is fashioned and a change of feeling is a change of pattern so like we spoke about yesterday we spoke about the subconscious mind being the form of creation. You know, the subconscious is what really objectifies whatever we pour into it. Remember, our conscious mind is our thinking mind. Our subconscious mind is our emotional mind. OK, our emotional mind is what creates all of our success. I want you guys to understand that the subconscious mind is what creates everything, because look at what he said right there. If you want to highlight that. That is a very important part to highlight. He said, whatever the mind of a man can conceive and feel as true, the subconscious mind must and can and must objectify. So think about how powerful that is right there. OK, your feelings create the pattern from which your world is fashioned and a change of feeling is a change of pattern. So in order for us to get to where we want to go to, we need to know exactly the thoughts that we are pouring into, impressing into our subconscious mind, okay? And I really want all of you to truly understand this because this is key information that I'm sharing with all of you right now. You have to and you must 
be very, very careful with the ideas and the thoughts that go into your conscious mind. Because whatever goes into your conscious mind, then is going to create a specific feeling. Okay. And whatever you thought about, it creates a feeling. And that feeling is what goes into your subconscious mind. And it doesn't know whether it's, you got to remember, you don't know, the mind doesn't know whether it's good or bad. It just knows what you fed it. That's all it knows. And it doesn't know whether it's good or bad. It's going to rectify, it's going to create every single thing that you put into your mind. So let's continue. The subconscious never fails to express that which has been impressed upon it. That's such something so simple to understand, but listen to that. The subconscious never fails to express that which has been impressed upon it. So it never fails, never fails to express whatever you impress upon it. So whatever you impress upon it through your feelings, through your thoughts, is going to be expressed. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, it's going to express it. So everything that's happening in your life is a reflection of what you've been impressing upon it. You got you to gotta think about this. You got to put yourself in position right now. Like even me reading this to you guys, I'm thinking about where my life is and, you know, the life that I'm living now and the things that happen in my life and the situations and the circumstances that are currently happening in my life right now. And I'm thinking, I'm like, man, what have I been impressing into my subconscious mind? What are the thoughts that I'm impressing into my subconscious mind? Because all that I am experiencing right now, that's why it's an experience, because it is what's being expressed. Why do you say they think, yo, every, like this call is an experience. The things that we live on today, July 6th, will be an experience for a lot of you. This is an experience. Why is it an experience? Because it is what your subconscious mind is expressing based on whatever you impressed upon it. Is this making sense so far? Put a one in the chat box if this is making sense because I need you guys to truly understand this information because this is valuable information. We are only living a reflection of what our subconscious mind is expressing based off of what we impressed upon it. So everything that we live from the positives to the negatives, it is all a reflection of what we've been impressing into our mind through our thoughts, through our ideas, through the music that we listen to, to the people that have influence over us. It is all an expression of what we've done, right? So the subconscious never fails to express that which has been impressed upon it. The moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. It accepts the feeling oppressed upon it, impressed upon it. Your feeling as a act existing within itself and immediately sets about to produce in the outer or objective world the exact likeliness of that feeling. The subconscious never alters the accepted beliefs of man. It outpictures them to the last detail whether or not they are beneficial. Wow. Wow. Did you guys hear that right there? The moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. So the moment you have any kind of thought, if I have a thought of abundance, if I have a thought of becoming a seven-figure earner, all right. The moment I have that thought of becoming that success, of becoming that earner, of becoming that specific leader, right away, the subconscious mind receives that impression and it begins to work out the ways of its expression. How am I going to help Nano become that seven figure earner? What am I going to do? What situation, what circumstance, what person am I going to align Nano with that will help him accomplish this vision that he has? That's how it works. That's why they say the mind is the most powerful thing that we have. That's all we need to become successful. So 
if it happens in the negative, if it happens in the positive, it also happens in the negative. We talked about this the other day with the laws. It's called the law of what, guys? What is the law that says that if there's a positive, there's also a negative? Let's see who was paying attention the other day when we did the call of the laws of the universe. What is the law that states that there is an opposite? There we go. There we go. We got some people that know the answer. The law of polarity. The law of polarity states that for every, every positive, there's a negative. Okay. There's a complete opposite reaction. It's called the law of polarity. Okay. So we need to know that there, there is laws. There are laws, guys. There's laws here. And the law of polarity is one of them. And that's what he's basically explaining right here on this, on this specific chapter that we're going over right here. He's basically saying the moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. Listen, it accepts the feeling impressed upon it. Your feeling as a fact existing within itself and immediately sets about to produce in the outer or objective world the exact likeliness of that feeling. Okay, so it doesn't matter what feeling you impress upon it, it's going to create it on the outside as well. So if you impress feelings of worry, you impress feelings of doubt, you impress feelings of insecurity, stress, overwhelmness, okay, right away, look at what it says. Your feeling as a fact existing within itself, a fact Listen to that a, as a fact existing within itself. Okay, so the moment that you accept that feeling as true, the moment you say, I am, I am stressed, I am overwhelmed, I am poor, I am lacking money. As long as soon as you impress that upon you and you and you say it enough and you accept it as true, which becomes a fact within itself, it says it immediately sets out to produce. In the outer or objective world, the exact likeliness of that feeling. So now you're going to experience something in the outer world, in the objective world, okay, something that aligns with the exact likeliness of that feeling. So if you've been feeling feelings of stress, the outer world is going to present you with more situations that will make you more stressed. If you have been having feelings of worry, okay, the universe and the mind will put you in situations where you will start to feel more worried, more overwhelmed. It works in all ways. You're going to continue to create these in both positive and both negative. I want you to understand this. I chose because for years I was just impressing negative feelings. You know how hard it was for me to believe that I can move out of my parents' house? You know how hard it was for me to believe that I can move out of the hood where every single person that I know that grew up in my neighborhood has not made it out? And if they ever did make it out, they made it out doing it illegally. Think about that. Most people that made it out of the hood, they made it illegally. So this is very, very important that we all understand. I used to be worried. I'm like, bro, how am I going to live? How am I going to leave the hood if no one's ever left the hood? I knew I wasn't going to do it working a job because I looked around and every single person that lives in every single one of these apartment buildings, every person that, that walks down that street, they all have jobs. None of them have the things that I want. Do I love them? Do I appreciate them? Do I thank them for everything that they've ever done for me? Absolutely. And it's never talking down on anybody because I know that everybody's doing the best that they can with what they know. But I had to understand that in the environment that I was in, there was no way that I can become successful. It's impossible because everywhere I look, nobody has the results that I want. Nobody has the connection to God that I want. Nobody has the, 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 the emotional intelligence. Nobody has the awareness to get ourselves out of here. So think about how many times I used to doubt myself. How many times I worried myself like, yo, am I ever going to be able to make it out of this? This is going to be hard. 
I used to stress out. I used to, I used to be worried. I used to be overwhelmed. People would join my business and quit. I'm like, how am I ever gonna, how am I ever gonna build a successful business if everybody that joins me quits? If everybody that says that they're gonna do this with me, they end up leaving me. Do you guys understand how hard that was for me? All my friends and all my family that joined my business, they quit within the first year. It was so hard for me to actually start to believe that this was possible for me. It was almost like, I was like, man, what am I going to do? How, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? And then I started reading this book. I started reading this book. And I started to put myself in a better feeling because I had realized that I had put myself in very bad feelings. I had put myself in feelings that I did not want to put myself in. And I needed to change that. My parents didn't believe in me. My relationship at the time didn't believe in me. Friends had already given up on the business. All my friends that I went to college with thought I was absolutely crazy. They was like, bro, you have a you have a degree from one of the top schools in New York City. You could go get a job right now and easily make fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. Everybody thought I was crazy for choosing to do a network marketing business, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And it's crazy because a year and a half into it, I didn't really make any results, barely. I barely had any results almost two years into the game. Barely had any results. So think about that. Think about leaving school and a year and a half later while all your friends are, you know, think about it. All my friends were getting married. All my friends were buying homes. All my friends were moving to new places and, you know, establishing themselves in their jobs. And I'm over here still trying to figure out how I'm, how I'm going to do anything in life. It was hard and it was a lot of pressure on me. A lot, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure that most people would have folded in those because those are moments of true tests of faith. And guess what? I had to change the way I was feeling because of this right here. So I want you guys to really take this information and run with it. This is what I did. I applied this information right here over and over and over again. I, 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 I. I not forced myself, but I said, I convinced myself that I said, you know what? Even though I'm not where I want to be at right now, I'm going to do whatever it takes to wake up every day and feel like I am that millionaire. I'm going to wake up every day and I am going to feel like I am that success, like I am that six-figure earner, like I am that person. Like he said yesterday, I am is one of the most powerful words. Even though I didn't have any of the results that I wanted physically, it didn't matter to me. I had it in the spiritual world. I started to create everything first in my mind, spiritually, the thoughts that I were having. I would walk outside. I've told you guys these stories so many times. I would walk outside. I always had headphones on, listening to Kevin Trudeau, listening to Jim Rohn. I would fall asleep listening to this. I would wake up reading books, listening to audios. I stopped spending so much time on my phone and I started spending more time studying, reading books, really putting myself in that in that bag. And that's what I want you guys to start to understand is that this is what it takes because you have to change the feelings. Right. That's what he said. He says. He said. He said and immediately sets out. Sets about to produce in the outer objective world the exact likeliness of that feeling. The subconscious never alters the accepted beliefs of man. It outpictures them to the last detail whether or not they are beneficial. Whether or not they are beneficial, it's going to picture them for you. Now, let's continue. To impress the subconscious mind with a desirable state, you must assume the feeling that would be yours had you already realized your wish. In defining your objective, you must be concerned only with the objective itself. The manner of expression or the difficulties involved are not to be considered by you. To think feelingly or any states impress, impresses it on the subconscious. So this is important right here. Listen to this. 
To impress the subconscious with a desirable state, you must assume the feeling that would be yours had you already realized your wish. So this is where I had to start really thinking about who I wanted to become, okay? This is the key. I had to really start thinking about who I wanted to become, okay? Never mind. And once I started to do that, I that was my main focus. My focus no longer was broke nano. My focus no longer was Nano who couldn't help his mom with the bills. My focus no longer was, you know, this person who had people who joined this business and left every. I started to change my focus from, you know, the person, the leader who had people joining his business and left to I have an abundance of people joining my business every week. I went from being the person who used to think negative to being super positive, regardless of my situation. I went from the person that used to look at his bank account and get sad to the person that would look at his bank account and now celebrate like, wow, I am so thankful that I have hundreds and thousands of dollars in my bank account, even though I didn't have hundreds and thousands of dollars, right? I started to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. I'm like, bro, I have all of this success already. I have all the success that I want already. I have everything. And even though I didn't have it in the physical yet, I was creating it in the spiritual because like it says, right? To impress the subconscious mind with the desirable state, you must assume the feeling that would be yours had you already wished. So that's why I told you guys, I would walk around in this, in this living room, celebrating the fact that I was a six figure earner, celebrating the fact that I was a success, that I was attracting leaders, that I was doing that because I knew that whatever I impressed into my subconscious mind was what going to be expressed. Because think about it. I was, I was impressing into my subconscious mind feelings of doubt, feelings of fear, feelings of insecurity, feelings of lack, and it would be expressed so easy. More situations would show up for me to be stressed. More situations would show up of me to have lack of money. So I'm like, if it's working in the negative, it should work in the positive as well. Think about it. If it's working for us, it, it's already working for us. If you really sit down and think about it, it is already working. It's not that does this stuff work or not, is that it already is working. Look at the situation that you're currently going through. It was an expression of whatever you impressed. So I said, all I have to do is change what I am impressing on my subconscious mind. What am I impressing? That's why I took the time and I said, bro, I am going to be so intentional about my morning routine. That's why I always tell you guys, my morning routine has been the key to everything, to everything, because I would wake up with a very specific intention and it was to feel as good as possible. I couldn't use my phone because my phone was my old self, right? In order for your new self to be born, you have to sacrifice your old self. Listen to that again. In order for your new self to be born, you must sacrifice your old self. The old version of me would wake up and grab his phone. The new version of me woke up and read his gold card, woke up and read a book. The old version of me would stay asleep till 11 a.m., 10 a.m. The new version of me was up at 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning. The old version of me used to like to stay home. The new version of me used to love to be in, in nature and positivity. I completely let go of who I was. And that's the hardest fight that you're going to have to go through. Because that old version of you, it, ha it wants to stay in you. It doesn't want you to leave it. It wants to stay and fight and be there. And it wants you to stay the old version of you. But I love what somebody said on Instagram, right? Shout out to life. Is it life with ha? She said, old ways won't open new doors. And that is facts. Old ways won't open new doors. And that's what happened for me right there, right? So you got to understand that you got to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Got to live in that feeling. How are you going to feel when you become that six-figure earner? How are you going to feel? How are you going to feel when you get to that specific goal? You buy your mom that house. What? How is that going to feel? That's what I want you guys to understand. This is the key. Okay, so let's continue. Therefore, 
if you dwell on difficulties, listen to this right here. If you dwell on difficulties, barriers or delay the subconscious by its not by its very non-selective nature accepts the feelings of difficulties and obstacles as your request and proceeds to produce them in your outer world. Look at that. Did you hear that right there? Listen to that one more time. Listen to that one more time. Ve Listen to this right here specifically. I'm going to read it very slow. Therefore, if you dwell, what is the definition of dwell? Let's look up the definition of dwell. Dwell definition. The definition of dwell on Google says to live in or at a specific, uh, sorry, live in or at a specified place. OK, so dwell is when you stay on something, right? When when you focus on this one thing. OK, so let's just use instead of dwell, let's use focus. Therefore, if you focus on difficulties, barriers or delay. How many of you guys feel like you're delayed on your success? How many of you guys feel like you're dealing with certain barriers in your life right now? Right. Certain obstacles. Listen to this. This is so important. If you focus on difficulties, barriers or delays, the subconscious by its very non-selective nature. Accepts the feelings of difficulties and obstacles as your request and produce and, and, and proceeds to produce them in your outer world. Boom. It's that easy. So if you're dealing with obstacles, if you're dealing with challenges, if you're dealing with certain things in your life right now, it's because that's what you've been impressing upon it. It is that simple. There's no way around it. It's not, it's not based on your company. It's not your mom. It's not your dad. It's not your friends. It's not your family. It's not the fact that you have kids. It's nothing. It's none of that. It's what you've been impressing on your subconscious mind. One more time. Therefore, if you dwell on difficulties, barriers or delays, the subconscious by its very non-selective nature accepts the feelings of difficulties and obstacles as your request and proceeds to produce them in your outer world. Why do you think I always tell you guys, yo, when I'm going through something, I always think about, bro, what, Nano, what have you been impressing on your mind that it, this is happening why are you going through this obstacle why are you dealing with this specific challenge okay let's continue the subconscious is the womb of creation it receives the idea onto itself through the feelings of man it never changes the idea received but always gives it form hence the subconscious outpictures the idea in the image and the likeliness of the feeling received. Psst. Let's keep reading. To feel a state as hopeless or impossible is to impress the subconscious with the idea of failure. Although the subconscious faithfully serves man, it must not be inferred that the relation is that of a servant to a master as was anciently conceived the ancient prophets called it the slave and the servant of man saint paul personified it as a woman and said the woman should be subject to man in everything the subconscious does serve man and faithfully gives form to his feelings however the subconscious has a distinct distaste for compulsion and responds to persuasion rather than to command. Consequently, it resembles the beloved wife more than the servant. The husband is head of the wife. Ephesians number five. May not be true of man and woman in their earthly relationship, but it's true of the conscious and the subconscious, the male and the female aspects of consciousness. This is all very important information. Your subconscious mind, okay, 
can either be your servant or it can be your slave. This is important information. It's either this, it's either the prophets called it either the slave or the servant. You gotta understand this. Okay, and they relating it back to men and women, male and female. Okay, in order for me to have a baby, okay, I need to transfer my energy with another female, and that female will go and create, okay, that reality of whatever I impressed upon her. Okay, they're using it in very similar aspects of what we live on a day to day basis. Okay, for, for my individuals that had kids here, okay, you had a transfer of energy with another individual, and then that womb of creation was created, and now your kids are an expression of what was impressed on you. That's all it is. So this is key that we all understand, and that's what he's breaking it down to. So let's continue here. The mystery of which Paul referred when he wrote, this is a great mystery. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, and they too shall be one flesh. It's simply the mystery of consciousness. Consciousness is really one and undivided, but for creation sake, it appears to be divided into two. So what he's saying is that you are really one in itself. Okay. And they're using the, the example of male and female because in reality, when you're with somebody, you guys are really one. Even though you are divided, even though there's a male and a female, you are really one. Okay, because when, when, when you go out there and create kids, it's created by both of you. It couldn't be created without both of you. So in reality, you guys are one. Okay, consciousness is really one and undivided, but for creation's sake, it appears to be divided into two. All right. We are really one. OK, the conscious objective or male aspect truly is the head and dominates the subconscious, which is a subjective or female aspect. However, this leadership is not that of the tyrant, but of the lover. So by assuming the feeling that would be yours, where you are already in possession of your objective, the subconscious is moved to build the exact likeliness of your assumption. That's the key. We have to assume the feeling that would be yours where we are already in possession of your objective. What do you want? What goal do you want to accomplish? You have to assume the feeling of that now. How do you think I was able to attract all that I've attracted? It's because I assume the feeling of these things. I assumed by Proctor being right listen to this i knew bob proctor was i, I knew i was going to be a part of bob proctor's um mindset version of this company two years ago i wrote it down two years ago i knew i was going to live in the beach in miami two years ago so if those are the impressions that I put in my mind and they came true, I'd be telling people, I'm like, bro, I sometimes, I, I be telling people, I'm like, bro, I feel like I found, like I, I literally have the keys to success. I know how to create the life that I want because I've attempted it a few times and I know that this stuff actually works. I was explaining this to one of my boys the other day. He's like, bro, how do you feel? You know, you're, you're, you're four years in the game. And so on and so forth. And you know what I told him? I'm like, bro, to be honest, I feel like I just got started. Like, I'm like, bro, I'm four years in, but I feel like it's the beginning for me because I feel like the last four years were just like warm up years. They were practice years to, you know, see if this stuff actually worked. I developed my emotional intelligence. I developed a relationship with God. I read the books. I know what's needed. You know, I learned how to journal. I became a better leader. Like all of this time was all warm up for me. Like, now that I know all of this stuff, like, you see how they say, yo, I wish I knew what I knew now when I got started. For me, I'm like, I'm just getting started. Like, I know what I know now, and I'm getting started all over again. Like, 
the next four years is, is what I want you guys to really count. These next four years is what I want you guys to really count. Now it's go time, like my brother G Hundo said in the chat box. Now it's go time for me. Because now I get it. Now I understand. Now I know that this stuff works. I've applied the information and I see that it worked. I attracted the things that I put into my mind. I became the leader that I wanted to become. I poured into myself. I've read over 80 books. I finished over seven journals. I've meditated hundreds and thousands of hours. Now I know what works and what doesn't work. I built my foundation. Now I'm going to go lay the bricks. You see that perspective change? A lot of people would be like, wait, bro, but you've been in the game four years. Uh, uh, whatever, this and this and this. I'm like, man, I'm okay. One day it's going to look like it, it. One day you guys are going to see me here. And the next day you guys are going to see me there. And, you, and it's going to look like it happened overnight. But it didn't happen overnight. It took time. It takes time. Four years. Yep. I took four years of unlearning. I unlearned for the last four years. I unlearned a lot of that bad information and now I'm relearning. So, so by assuming the feeling that would be yours where you already in possession of your objective, the subconscious is moved to build the exact likeliness of your assumption. You know why I believe that is true? That is true because before I moved into the penthouse in Miami, I would always visualize me going up in the elevator, it opening up, me walking in, looking at the view, and in the yo, and it's yo, swear on everything that I love. In my visualization, I would always turn to the right, and to the right was always the kitchen. And I would walk into the kitchen and I would open up the refrigerator every time. That was my way of visualizing me moving into my penthouse. And just like that, when you would walk into the penthouse, when I moved into Miami, I would walk in, turn to the right, the kitchen was on the right, and the yo. To the exact point, to the exact likeness, to the way I saw the refrigerator, everything, everything was to the exact likeness of how I used to see it. That's why I believe this information to be true. Even the color of the refrigerator was the exact color of the refrigerator I would see in my mind. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling of their reality. For only through feeling is an idea subconsciously accepted. And only through this subconscious acceptance is it ever expressed. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling. That's why you got to feel the feeling. That's how it is. This is important. All right. So these last two pages and we're done here. All right. It is easier to I'm on page 10 at the top. It is easier to ascribe your feelings to events in the world than to admit that the conditions of the world reflect reflect your feeling. However, it is eternally true that the outside mirrors the inside. That's that's powerful right there. Let me read that again. It is easier to ascribe. Let's look up the definition of ascribe real quick. Right. So we could get a better understanding of this word. Right. As, ascribe definition. Ascribe means a tribute to something. Right. It's an attribute to something. So it is easier to ascribe your feeling to events in the world than to admit that the conditions of the world reflect your feeling. However, it is eternally true that the outside mirrors the inside. So whatever is going on outside is a reflection of the inside. As within, so without. A man can receive nothing unless it is given him from heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is within you. See how powerful that is right there? As within, so without. A man can receive nothing unless it is given him from heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is within you. 
Nothing comes from without. All things come from within. The subconscious, sorry, from the subconscious. It is impossible for you to see other than the contents of your subconscious. Your world in its every detail is your consciousness objectified. That is powerful. Your world in its every detail is your consciousness, your thinking mind objectified. So the world that you are living right now, take a look at the situation that you are currently living right now. This is your world objectified, your consciousness objectified. Now, I don't want you to feel bad about that, though. If you are not happy with where you are, don't feel bad. Be like, OK, be grateful that, yo, that's crazy because I created this with my thoughts and I wasn't aware of this information. So if I was able to create this life that I am living right now based off of the way that I was thinking, imagine the life I'm going to create the next three, six months, one year from now. Imagine what you're going to create now, now that you know this. You can literally go and create the life and world that you want based off what you know now. I'm serious. You guys can literally create the life and world that you want based off of this now. Think about how awesome that is. You could go from living in your mom's house now to living in your dream condo, in your dream house, your dream penthouse. You can go from driving a Honda to driving a Ferrari. You can go from doing so-and-so to doing so-and-so. You know, it's you can live your life by design. Let's continue. Objective states bear witness of subconscious impressions. A change of impression results in a change of expression. So you must change what you impress in yourself in order for the expression to change. So if you want the outside to change, you need to change what you're allowing inside. Manifestation is very real. Very real. The subconscious accepts as true that which you feel as true. And because creation is the result of subconscious impressions, you by your feeling determine creation. You are already that which you want to be. And your refusal to believe this is the only reason you do not see it. Whatever you feel as true is what will happen. That's why you got to be very careful with what you say to yourself. You got to be very careful with the words you're using on a day-to-day -day basis. Because there's certain things that you're saying on a day-to-day -day basis that you're believing is true. I used to tell myself that I was broke until I truly believed it. And that's those were the... Think, 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 of, think about how that makes you feel. I had to change the way I thought. And even now that I have money, even now that I have success, okay, now I'm thinking about what my next level is, right? I'm thinking about what the next house is that I'm going to live in. I'm thinking about all the success because I've a lot of the things that I've created, they've came true. Me speaking in front of 10,000 people in Barcelona, you don't know how many times I watch myself walking on stage and doing that before that moment happened. You don't know how many times I thought about that moment and then it happened. You don't know how many times I visualized myself walking on stage, speaking on stage, traveling the world, visiting different countries, driving the cars, living in the houses, doing all, all of these things. And they've all become a reality. Every single thing that I've ever impressed on my subconscious mind that I did it with the feeling of it, it all came true. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it came true. All of it. From the money to, dude, even to my family's health, even to my health. Everything. Everything. Everything has come to a reality, everything. I promise you guys, this stuff works. And you know why I know it works is because it worked for me and I've been in the same exact position as some of you on this call and even worse. 
and I was able to do it. It doesn't matter how, how good you are in a situation, you can always create more good. And it doesn't matter how bad you are in a situation right now, you can get out of that situation if you learn and you apply this information that I'm teaching you on this call today. I promise you. Somebody asked me in the chat, how did you get so good at creating the feeling during visualization? I had to do it every day. Every day. In the beginning, you might not feel anything in the beginning. It might be hard to see the picture, but you have to go out and give it a shot every day. I created a movie. I created kind of like a scenario. So every day I would add more to that scenario. So for example, one day, you know, I would like, for example, I, I visualize, right? And I visualize sometimes myself driving my Rolls Royce. Okay. And because I've been in a Rolls Royce, I can be very detailed about the experience. So like when I'm driving my Rolls Royce, for example, okay, I know how the leather feels around the wheel because I've driven a Rolls Royce, right? I know how it smells. I know what it looks like when I look up and see the stars and the shooting stars on the ceiling. I know the way the, 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 I know the way the seat hugs, hugs my, hugs my body. And I, I know how it feels when it drives. So when I'm in visualization, I get the feeling of that Rolls Royce and I'm driving it. And like during my visualization, I'm looking up at the stars and I'm looking up and, you know, I feel myself driving the car and I feel the leather in my hands and I'm driving and I pull up, you know, and I open it up and, you know, I go up to my pet house and I open it up and see the ocean and I go into my kitchen, I go into my bedroom, I sit on my bed, you know, I go on my balcony, you know, I see, I open up my closet, I put on some fly clothing and some nice sneakers and, you know, I see myself getting on a, a, a plane flying to different countries and speaking on stages and being edified. Like, like I really sit down and see these things all the time in my mind and I celebrate it and I give thanks. And I am so thankful because I'm seeing the reality that I'm going to live. And then what tends to happen is I go and create that reality because guess what? I'm feeling it. And I say it to myself, I'm like, wow, this feels so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It feels so good to own this penthouse. It feels so good to be traveling first class to these countries. It feels so good to be able to, you know, travel the world and speak on stages. All of this feels so amazing. Listen to, it feels so amazing. So last page right here, and then we're done. To seek on the outside for that which you do not feel, sorry, to seek on the outside for that which you do not feel you are is to seek in vain. For we never find that which we want. We find only that which we are. In short, you express and have only that which you are conscious of being or possessing. To him that hath it is given, denying the evidence of the senses and appropriating the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the way to the realization of your desire. Denying the evidence of the senses and appropriating the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the way to the realization of your desire. Mastery of self-control of your thoughts and feelings is going to be your highest achievement. However, until perfect self-control is attained so that in spite of appearances, you feel that, sorry, you feel all that you want to feel. You sleep and prayer to aid you in realizing your desired states. These are the two gateways in to the subconscious. That's the key. This information is unbelievable. It really is. But you got to go and apply this information. You have to. It's really the only way. That middle, that middle paragraph right there is some of the most valuable information that you will ever read in this book. He said, denying the evidence of the senses. Denying. Denying what you see right now. Denying your negative bank account. 
denying the fact that your business is not where you want it to be, denying that so-and-so things are happening in your life, denying the evidence of the senses, okay, and appropriating the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the way to the realization of your desire. That's the key. That's the key. And then he said, sleep and prayer. He said, use sleep and prayer to aid you in realizing your desired states. These are the two gateways into the subconscious. And the next two chapters are on sleep and prayer. Tomorrow's chapter will be on sleep. The third chapter will be on prayer. This is some amazing information, man. Now that I think about it, it might take us more than a few days to finish this book. This is incredible information. Sleep is a pretty long chapter. Sleep is actually the longest chapter in this book. But I really want you guys to understand this information for real. And the reason why I take the time to sit down and teach this stuff to you guys is because sometimes you need somebody to break it down for you in a way that you can understand it. The reason I can break down this information in a way that you can understand it is because I've experienced this information. I've applied the information. I've gotten the results from this information and now I'm teaching the information. This information is 1% of 1%. If everybody knew this information, everybody's life would be changed. If every, Think about it. If everybody was aware of what I just went over, so much more people would create the desired states that they really want. Imagine if we were taught this in school, when we were in high school, when we were in middle school. What if we would have been taught how to master our conscious and subconscious mind? What would we were taught how to master our feelings and how to create the life that we really wanted instead of being taught how to be employees. We can create the life that we really want. What if we understood the importance of not accepting other people's limits onto us? What if we understood the law of association? Understanding that the people that we hang around and we spend the most time with will determine our reality as well. This is the real information that people do not want us to know. And in reality, guys, if you go out there and apply this information, this information will change your life forever. Think about what this information can not only do for you, but for generations to come. My whole life and my family's generations will be changed because of this information that I just taught you guys on this call. I will be teaching this for as long as I live. This same book right here. I will be studying this exact same book for as long as I live right here because this is all you need to know. Everything else is extra. Leadership is extra. This is the information that you really need to know right here. My family, Papeleta, was goody. Let's link, bro. Hit me up after this. But we got to really understand this stuff. For real, for real. I'm going to be teaching my kids the power of visualization the moment that they're in three, four years old. I'm going to be waking up and taking my kids on morning routines with me. Luckily for them, we're going to be extremely wealthy and rich, and they're going to be able to meditate right there on the beach. We're going to have yoga instructors. We're going to have nutritionists. We're going to have everything. We're going to have saunas. We're going to have all the superhuman secrets. That's why, that's why I waited. That's why I waited a little bit. I said, I got to put myself in position. And then I'll have kids. Nothing against people who have their kids now. That's a that's the biggest blessing. I see my brother Jay Miles. He said, I'm paying my kids to read now. I'm going to do that too. But fam, this information that I'm teaching you is worth millions. It's it's actually priceless. It's not even worth millions. It's priceless. 
shit, it shouldn't even be. There's no price to that stuff. I know people that pay hundreds and thousands of dollars for that information. We just taught it for free on this call. And you guys will realize as life goes on and you guys go to successful seminars and you listen to your leaders. And now that you are aware of this information, you will realize that a lot of the success that they have was created because of this information right here. Everything. I'm sure that if you look back at a time in your life, right, if there was a time that you look back, right, and you look at when you were very successful and you look at how things went for you and how you were flowing and you were making sales or you were doing something really well, you can look back and you can think about how good you were feeling during that time. How you were creating those scenarios. Dude, I remember I used to do this when I was playing baseball. It's so crazy. When I used to play baseball growing up, right, and I would have big games, I would visualize myself winning the game. I would visualize myself, you know, throwing strikes. I would feel it. And it's crazy because then I would go and live those moments. But I was I was doing all of that while I was really unconscious about this, right? I wasn't aware that I can create that. So I just did it to do it. It wasn't really to, it was just something that I did. I would pray the night before. I would pray the day of the game. I would sit there right before I fell asleep and see myself winning the game. All of these things that he's saying, dude, I used to do this back in the past, but I was unconscious about it. I didn't know that I was actually doing it. And a lot of people have success because of that. They don't know that they're consciously feeling good all the time and they're attracting good things because of their feelings. There's people that have become successful, but they're unconscious about it. We got to be the ones that are go out now, guys, and apply this information all summer. You don't remember, guys, you have nothing to lose. It's not like I'm asking you guys to go buy a thousand dollar book. It's not like I'm asking you guys to go spend thousands of dollars on anything. What I'm asking you to do is free. I'm asking you to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled and change your feelings from negative, doubtful, low vibrational feelings to changing them to positive and all of those things. You got to understand this stuff. This is what's going to help you change your life right here. I guarantee you it. This is what's going to help you change your life. The business that we are a part of, they're just vehicles that are used to help us accomplish the things that we want. The company that I'm a part of is just a vehicle. But if it wasn't for this information, I wouldn't know how to do it. This is my this is my GPS right here. These books are the GPS. The company I'm a part of is just the vehicle. That's all it is. It's just this is just the, the the GPS right here. That's all it is. So I only want you guys to understand that if you guys got value from that call right here, if you guys got value from this call, put a one in the chat box if you guys got value from this call right here. Because we're gonna wrap it up right there. We finished up chapter one of it. But I know if you guys take this information and you apply this every single day over the next three to six months, a lot, because remember, you don't plant the seed today and get and eat the fruit tomorrow. So whatever you're going to start planting today, it's going to grow over the summer and you're going to get it at some point in time. You'll get it. But you just have to apply this information. You have to apply it. You got to apply it, family. You have to. You and you must apply it every single day, each and every single day. No matter what happens, you got to go out there and apply. It. This is what's gonna change your life, seriously. But 
they're going to change 90 days from now, six months from now, based off of the seeds and the impressions that you put into your subconscious mind today. All right, family. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for hopping on this call. I'm so thankful that God allowed me to pour into you guys today. Um, like this video, like this call if you haven't liked it yet. Uh, turn on the post notifications. If you haven't turned on post notifications, subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment on the video below. Show love, family. I would really appreciate it. Um, thank you guys so much for taking the time to jump on this call. I'm a... Uh, um, Yes, Jadira, uh, send me a text message and I got you. I'll connect you with my credit guy. I already got a few people connected. Um, they're already getting their credits fixed. So I got you. Um, just connect with me. Um, let me know and just send me your name and number on Instagram and I'll connect you with him right away. He's already helping a few people on the mornings when they know family with their credits. So you'll be good. So um, that's that. Um, this is the book right here. Like I said, feeling is a secret. Feeling is a secret. Um, quick prayer. And we'll head out, all right, fam? Everybody bow your heads and let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for blessing us with this beautiful Wednesday morning. We are so extremely thankful for you and everything that you're doing for us each and every single day. The information that you continue to provide us with is truly life-changing information. And we are truly understanding the importance of our inner world and how we must continue to work internally in order for us to change what's happening on the external. And everything is making so much more sense now, even for myself, someone who's been studying this information for the last three years. This information is really changing us and is really allowing us to grow, God. So I just want to say thank you for always, always, always teaching us exactly what we need to hear at the time that we need to hear. It. Because this information is truly changing all of our lives. We are extremely thankful for what you continue to do for us each and every single day. We love you so much. We appreciate you so much for being that leader for us, for staying strong for us, for guiding us through this journey. And it's just so much to be thankful for, God. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are truly the best leader. You are walking right beside us. We feel your presence on these calls every single morning. And we know that you're here for us. And the people that hear the call, that hear the message on these calls, Father, we ask and we pray that you allow us and give us the strength to apply this information in the way that we're supposed to clear us and clean us of any energy that we don't need. Eliminate anyone in our lives that's not meant to be there right now and only allow those that's supposed to be there. And we will only impress feelings of positivity, of love, of peace, of enlightenment, of success into our subconscious mind which means the only thing that will be expressed is the positive father. So we love you. We appreciate you. Allow us to only sow seeds and plant seeds of positivity so that we can express seeds of positivity. We love you and we appreciate you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 All right, family. So I love you guys so, so much. Thank you guys so much for hopping on today's call. I love you guys to the moon and back. If you guys, Tamara, reach out to me. If you want to be a part of I Am, no problem. Reach out to me. Uh, let me know. I'm actually today and tomorrow, I'm going to be running private calls for those who want to be a part of my business. Uh, want to be, if you if you were a part of I Am in the past um, and you want to come back again, let me know. I'm opening up my mentorship only for 21 people. Okay. And it starts today. All right, I'm going to be inviting people to a private call. All right, um, so if that's something that you're interested in, let me know. I'm only opening it up to 21 people, family, all right? So I love you guys so much. I hope you guys have a blessed, 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 blessed rest of your day. If you guys want to get in contact with me, I'm going to be on my phone for the next hour answering messages in my DMs and everything. So if you've been wanting to get in contact with me, if you've been wanting to rejoin, if you've been wanting me to connect you with anything, okay, for the next hour and a half from now till 12, I'll be on my phone answering everybody, all right, fam? So I love you all. I appreciate you guys all. Connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram is at longlivenano. It is one. It's my one and only Instagram, okay? If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's livelovenano, okay? Um, I might start getting into TikTok, so I'm getting into TikTok as well. I think my TikTok is also Long Live Nano as well. Um, subscribe to the channel. 
I'll have to text your Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it's actually probably easier to, to, to get to me through Twitter, actually, um, because I don't have as many messages on Twitter. So um, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. We'll be back tomorrow for another episode of Mornings with Nano. God bless, fam. Let's get it.